Hello, my name is Fran Sands. Welcome to MyBoxingCoach.com. In a recent video, I named my five favourite um, YouTube boxing trainers. Got a great response to that. Everyone saying how it was it was generous and it was uh, a good thing to do to sort of big up other other good coaches on on the internet. Um, but you see, for me, it was a, an entirely natural thing to do as a coach. Um, the reason I say that is that for me to properly help you, I believe that I really need to promote versatility in your boxing style. It doesn't matter whether you're a competitor or whether your boxing training is all about improving your fitness. And versatility and how versatile you are is what this video is all about, okay? Um, by the end of it, <clears throat> you'll understand the importance of being versatile. And I'll even give you some tips on on how to get there. So, by the time I'd finished my boxing career, I'd had 60 fights, I reckon I'd probably been influenced by a hundred or more coaches, okay? From starting off in here, you have your team of boxers. As you get better, as you improve, you represent your city, then your region, and then, you know, if, it, if things go really well, you, you represent your country. Every step of that journey, I met new coaches. I was on residential training camps and daily training camps. And every sort of week, month, year, I was meeting new coaches, working pads with new coaches, being led on, on training sessions by new coaches. Every one of those coaches had some influence on me to a greater or lesser, lesser degree. It helped me to become versatile. And versatility is the ability to adapt, respond to your environment, um, your circumstances or your opponent. I remember seeing an interview with Marvin Hagler in which um, he was asked what his, um, his most effective characteristic was and, and he just un really quickly just went, versatility, really versatile. He could box, he could fight, he could move, he could switch hit, he could attack to the body, he could attack to the head. He could do it all, he had a real range of skills, tactics and techniques, and that's what stood them out. And the same is true in life, not just in boxing. Uh, 6th of June, 1944, the Normandy landings, Omaha Beach, the US Armed Forces storm ashore. In that first wave, there was so much sort of death and destruction that, you know, all of the senior officers or the, the more senior officers, the guys who were giving out the orders, the vast majority of them were killed. So some of the most senior people you had on the beach were sort of corporals. So this was all about young men, young corporals and privates, the age of 18, 19, 20, taking decisions, taking t key tactical battlefield decisions, running small unit actions and trying to get up the beach and find ways to get off the beach. The German defenders, on the other hand, were a very different machine. Their command structure was really rigid. If they wanted to move even a simple machine gun, they had to get on the comms line, they had to phone back to senior officers 10 miles behind the line, and all of this took time before any kind of approval was given. So they lacked versatility. The attackers were very versatile. The young American soldiers were making all kinds of good decisions. The defenders, the German troops, were not versatile. And that's how the Americans ended up getting their foothold and getting off those beaches. It's true in life. You've got to be versatile. Do you know that in the Eastern European boxing system, they train and teach six variations of the boxing stance? Six. All so subtly different, all helpful in different circumstances. I'll take you through them. Stance number one is the classic Eastern European counter-punching style, okay? Lead hand high in the way of any incoming shots. Side on, body weight onto the back leg, okay? So the body weight is, is eased back, right? Stance number two, same structure, side on, body laid back, but rather than having the hand up there, the hand is down here, okay? So they're at, at long range, teasing. These first two stances are defensively minded. Generally speaking, <clears throat> any boxing stance that has the weight on the back leg 
it is a defensive mindset. It is a counterpunchers sort of um, counterpunchers style. Third stance. Body weight slightly forward. Arms in double cover. So there. Okay. This is not. These are not huge transfers of weight. But that body weight forward. Arms in double cover. Body weight's not over the leg, so the nose doesn't go past the knee, but still, it's there. Body weight slightly forward, a more offensive stance, okay? In the same theme, again, body weight central, same as stance number one, lead hand high. Again, you are being slightly more offensive. Your posture is more offensive. The body weight is central. Stance number four. Stance number five, not one I would really encourage is low hands okay body weight central so you're putting very subtle pressure on but your hands are low you've got to be ready to be moving again not something i would actually encourage and stance number six is what they call a frontal stance it's basically going square that drives huge improvements in power bum, bum, bum. so you can really Switch on with those hooks and uppercuts. Six different stances, all of which offer something different, a different mindset for yourself, a different dynamic when it comes to dealing with an opponent. So be versatile. Don't pigeonhole yourself. One of the greatest frustrations I encounter, particularly online, is people who pigeonhole themselves in different ways. I'm tall, therefore I must always stay on the outside and keep things at long range. Okay, well look, I'm not saying don't have a don't have a strongest suit, okay? If you are tall, if you have those physical advantages, then of course staying on the outside offers great advantages. However, when things come up close, you need to have tactics. So why not spend lots of time in the gym working the technique? to drive uppercuts this close to maximise power so that when you've got someone leaning forward lower than you, you can really drop their knees and drive these uppercuts through the middle. Make life really difficult for shorter people when they get up close to you. Same principle for a, a shorter boxer, someone who has a perceived lack of range or lack of reach. The amount of damage that a shorter boxer can do at their long range, don't forget, a, 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 high, a reach advantage is only an advantage if you allow it to be. It doesn't take much to draw a feint, to, to make a feint, draw a lead. And as soon as that lead comes and you've predicted it, it's no longer a reach advantage. Little slip in, half a step forward. I'm at my long range. The opponent's hand has come past and got to about here. I'm at long range smashing away at the opponent. So you can do huge damage at your long range. It's about taking the advantage away. Again, of course, you've probably got more advantages being up close, but do not pigeonhole yourself. That's something I always say. Well, I fight out of the peekaboo style. Okay, well, listen, whatever strength you think you have, okay, whatever your strongest game is, I don't care who you are. I don't care, you know, how many, you know, interactions you've had with other fighters. You will always meet someone better than you at that. Okay? Always. You might think you're the best fighter this side of Coyote Creek, but someone's waiting around the corner to be better. What do you do then? You need plan B. You need plan C. You need plan D. Be versatile. The more solutions you have to these challenges and problems, the better. So that's all about competition. What about the guys who were just doing this for fitness? Why is it important for you to be versatile? It's all about challenge and motivation. If you can make your training session, sessions interesting by saying, I'm going to emulate the style of boxer A or boxer B, you know, Evander Holyfield, Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, Floyd Mayweather, whoever it might be, the more interest you can inject, you can change the variation of your stance, you can change the dynamic, the more interesting your sessions will be, the greater the motivation, the greater the motivation, the greater the effort, and the better the outcome. Okay? 
Um, I'm going to leave it there. If you want a perfect demonstration of versatility, seek out Sugar Ray Leonard's 1976 gold medal winning performance against the devastatingly hard puncher Aldos or Aldama. Aldama, he, he was putting people asleep like malaria. He was unreal, really powerful. Watch what Leonard does. First minute of each round, dances, moves, pot shots, changes, brings Aldama forward. Next two minutes of each round, stands with Aldama and starts pressuring him and exchanging big bombs and keeping defensive awareness. Supreme demonstration of two extreme styles of boxing. Watch that fight. Fantastic. Okay, I'm going to stop. I hope you've enjoyed that. I know I've just talked a lot and fast, um, but I hope I've got the point across. Ask yourself the question, how versatile are you and how versatile should you be? Cheers, my name's Frantz and this is MyBoxingCoach.com.